Welcome to the Fearless Faith Radio Show, which follows me, Mary Grothy, and my path as a Christian executive in corporate America. I share the highs and lows, provide scripture and teaching, and then interview influential guests who are walking the talk. I aim to help fill the discipleship gap for Christians in the workplace by creating powerful and real weekly lessons we can all learn from and implement. Welcome to the Fearless Faith Radio Show. I'm your host, Mary Grothy, and today is a Reflections episode. It's been a while since I've been able to address our audience and give you a life update, share with you what is transpiring in my world. And so I decided to have a shorter episode today, something that I could come to you directly, share with you what has been happening in my life and what is on my heart. So bear with me here. If you're watching on video, I did type out some notes. So I'll be referencing those and want to look through these. So I changed jobs on July 1, not company, but jobs. And I wanted to just talk through that because that was a big shift in my life. I had been working as a chief revenue officer and my focus during that time was to rebuild my life post entrepreneurship. As many of you know, the last year or so of owning my company was a very difficult ride for me. And that job that I got to walk into as a chief revenue officer was really a godsend, but it came with its own challenges and sitting in a full-time capacity. So I did a few months on contract and then started full-time January 30th of 2023. And while I was doing that, (laughs) I had an opportunity to build a national brand, put boots on the ground across the country to help this company have a national presence. I grew the org, the organization that I was directly responsible for from about five or six people up to 30 people. And that growth happened really fast. It came with its own challenges, stressors, and also just went from being an executive of one when I was running my company to being absorbed into a seven person executive team. And so there was just a lot of me learning and growing and figuring out how to not be the head honcho and the sole person in charge. Definitely was a stretch role for me and I learned a ton, but one of the biggest things that came from that was in the last season, I noticed how much the role was consuming me. So in the last few months of the fiscal year, I noticed I wasn't the best version of myself. I didn't find myself honoring the Lord in the way I was speaking. I didn't find myself bringing life through my words. I found that I was easily triggered and I was emotional. I'm a really passionate person. (laughs) So (laughs) unfortunately that passion can be like high emotional, sweet passion, or it can be like fiery, scary passion. And a lot of the fiery passion was coming out, which isn't who I want to be. And so I made the very difficult decision to step down from that role. I felt like the Lord was showing me and revealing to me that I wasn't honoring him in all of my work and that I didn't have a lot of margin in my life. I found myself working seven days a week, morning, noon, evening, night. I had a lot of projects. I had a lot of messages to respond to throughout the day. I had a lot of phone calls to make and I was traveling almost every week. It was a big undertaking. I like big undertakings though. But to be able to sit back and hear and listen and realize that I wanted to build my speaking career. I wanted to build up this radio show. I wanted to start a nonprofit. I wanted to do all these things in my community. I wanted to be present for people in a way that like in my marriage and in my home that I just truly wasn't. And the Lord gave me this confidence that I could go and create a new role. And that's exactly what I did. So I very... Uh, gleefully was able to hang my hat up on my 18 month full-time chief revenue officer career and stepped into a role that I created for myself, which is an individual contributor role, head of wholesale and broker partnerships. So I've taken a subset of the work that we were doing at PNI and able to take this forth and launch it into the market to find wholesale partners and broker partnerships that wanted to refer or resell our product. And for the Two months in that role, July and August, it was such an interesting time. 
margin was created, but I also felt like the Lord was doing something very interesting in my life, like causing me to sit and pause and create room for reflection. It was almost as if I felt like his hand was coming down and like holding me like in a pause, like in a very loving way, (laughs) like a just hold on right now. Don't move. Don't create. Don't stir up. Don't be the entrepreneurial (laughs) person that you are. High energy, high capacity, high passion, like just be in this moment. And that was a very weird season for me because I am such a high risk, go at it at all costs, like load my calendar up, take on everything. But I felt it in various ways of needing to just take a a quiet season here from him. So I continued on my journey to ingest a lot of scripture as I have been sharing with you week over week that I've loved doing. But also my girlfriend invited me to revive a week at Revolution Church in Lone Tree, Colorado. And that was an unbelievable experience. I had an opportunity to hear from Christine Kane directly. Uh, She spoke a few times. She had three different messages for the church and she is very anointed and she is an excellent, excellent pastor, preacher, speaker. I don't know what category she is, but wow. One of her sermons, actually the first one that she did was about losing your edge. And she I believe was speaking from Isaiah, but I don't know that exactly. So don't hold me to that. But she was telling the story of a pickaxe. So if you could imagine a piece of wood and it's got the ax on top. And as a Christian, you have Christ living inside of you. I have Christ living inside of me. Christ is our edge, the calling on our life, the way that we abide and seek the calling that he has put on our life and willing to stand up and, and be firm in our faith and say yes to him and walk in obedience and, and really like take advantage of the anointing and the oil and the blessings and all of those things. So she had spoken about how when a Christian loses their edge. So if that top of a pickaxe, which is really where, you know, the the magic happens when you're using it, if that falls off, you've lost your edge. You're literally walking around with a stick like, Hey, look at me, look at my stick. And she did a much better job explaining this. If you want to go find that, it is on Revolution Church's YouTube channel. And it was the Saturday of that three-day week when in which she was speaking of Revival Week 2024. You should be able to find it just by searching those items. If you can't, send me a message and I'll send it to you. But what was so powerful for me is she was speaking over the church in in that and saying, like, did you lose your edge? Did someone take your edge? Go back into the moment. Like if you're in the season right now where you just feel like you're walking around with a stick and trying to figure out what to do with it, but you don't have that edge anymore. You don't have the anointing. You don't have the oil. You don't have that fire. You don't have the clarity and the direction and all these things. I'm like, I don't have any of those. You're speaking to me. I've lost all of it. I've lost the edge. I'm in this new role I created for myself. I stepped out of the CRO role, which was extremely demanding of my time and my energy and and my heart and my brain and everything. And I didn't have any vision other than like what was in front of me to conquer for that role. And so now I was faithful. I stepped into a new role, which impacted, you know, financially, my family and everything else is just a risk. But I step into this role, I have all this margin, and now I'm sitting in quiet time and reflection. <laughs> and I'm like, I have no edge. I literally have no idea what the Lord wants for me. And yet again, I have found myself in this exact same place, sitting, waiting, patient, quiet, trying to figure out like, where do I go from here? And so listening to the way that she was speaking over the church and challenging us to search and to dig and to identify, was our edge taken from us? Did we give our edge away? Did it, did it get lost? Like what happened? And So I felt just this surge of confidence coming back and reminding me who I am as a very fearless child of God. And in this season of my life, especially about a year ago, I really stepped out and said, I'm going to proclaim the name of Jesus. I'm going to spread the good news of the gospel. Yes, I am in the marketplace. I'm going to figure out how to do those two of those things. But the job really consumed me and the way of the world consumed me. And I felt that I lost the edge. Well, the edge is coming back. (laughs) That's the good news. The edge is coming back. (laughs) I'm so excited. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. So 
I will say that over the last week or so, the Lord has begun to open doors and things are moving. I don't feel like I'm in a season of rest anymore. I don't feel like I am needing to just be quiet and create all this margin and not, you know, and just like sit around, which is hard for me to do. My travel schedule is picking up some of the projects I'm working on, one in particular that I'll talk about at a later date is fueling everything inside of me, heart, passion, all of it. So I'm very, very excited about what is to come and I can't wait to tell you about it. It's premature right now. So I'll tell you as things come into fruition, but as the doors have been opening and it's really been a powerful week leading up to me recording this, but as it has started to open, I started to feel like, you know, Hey, can I piece this together? Oh, God was doing this when he did that. Oh, this happened because God was trying to do that. Oh, I know why that happened because God was keeping me from this, but then God was doing that. And this past week I have been trying to figure him out. And what I've been doing is attempting in my own mind to bring him down to a level that I can comprehend and understand. And so last night, this scripture came upon me, this verse, because I was really hearing him say, like, it is not your job to figure me out. That's what he was saying to me. It is not your job to figure me out. Find the peace and the comfort and the joy and the praise and the fact that I'm supernatural and mysterious and that I'm God and you're human and you're not going to get it. So this verse in Isaiah just was just resting in this last night, but this is Isaiah 55, eight through nine. And the scripture says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways declares the Lord as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so this for me, I I sat in this and I was, uh, I jotted down these notes that, that front part for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways declares the Lord. So here's what I thought. Okay. This statement is highlighting the absolute fundamental difference between God's way of thinking and acting and ours humans, AKA myself, right? I often rely on my own understanding. Logic is the key word here and desire to make decisions and interpret events. For me, this interpretation is a way that I work through my desire to have logic in all things. I'm very black and white. I don't operate well in the world of gray. And so this for me has been something I've been seeking this past week is I have to understand. I have to put it together. I have to know. I need the black and white. It all has to make sense. I need to understand why it's falling in place. I need the Lord to you know, part the heavens and stick his head out and tell me exactly, Mary Grothy, I want you here doing this right now and this thing because gosh, you know, if he did, I would. And so through seeking to hear his voice and hearing him speak to me and reveal things to me as I digest digest his words and spend time in prayer, you know, then I want to piece it together just so I can create the experience that I ultimately desire is that he would part the clouds and tell me, very growthy, do this because I would do it a hundred percent, no questions asked. And so oftentimes the biggest challenges that I have is just seeking specifically a hundred percent exactly what the Lord has for me out of fear of the Lord, because I don't want to waste one waking moment of my life. I want to honor him in everything that I do and the desire to hear from him and seek him and do what he has created me to do is the ultimate focus of my life. So with that, it's very humbling as he was bringing this verse to me and helping me sit in the fact that it is actually quite okay that I don't have the ability to discern and interpret exactly, exactly what he was doing and to quote unquote, figure him out, which is what I heard him say is you don't have to figure me out. Trusting in me is enough. And so this, um, anyway, the scripture then goes on to say, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And again, it just uh, helps us understand the gap between human perspectives and divine perspectives. There is a distance between the heavens and the earth. And I think it really symbolizes how much greater God is in his thoughts than we are in, in how we think. So anyway, this for me was just like an unbelievable opportunity to sit in the word and to have that peace just given to me last night of the Lord is working and he is good. 
And as long as I stay centered on that and seek him in the morning and seek him throughout the day, he knows my heart is open to him and he has my heart and I'm committing my work and my life and everything that I do, everything that I have to him that he can use me and I will remain steadfast on this journey of furthering the kingdom and that he will little by little continue to reveal that. And I feel like he is right now and he's putting opportunity in front of me to honor him in some of the most magnificent ways through the marketplace. And again, it's premature for me to talk about it yet in due time, I will tell you and reveal to you what I have been uh, working on here, which is extremely exciting. All right. So something, uh, last few episodes that we have, how cool has it been? Our guests have brought unbelievable biblical wisdom on the concept of money, prosperity, finances. And I have enjoyed with those episodes so much. I understood in those episodes, parts of God's view of money that I haven't before. And it was really helpful for me. I had some people reach out and share some comments on it as well. Sarah Dumas made a comment about how the enemy loves keeping Christians broke (laughs) and poor because uh, it puts them in a certain mindset and it allows the enemy to have a hold on them. But it's, there was just so much that was shared over the last few episodes that all had this common theme of, of money. And I'm like, so grateful that we brought that in because at first I'm like, this is kind of a taboo topic. So if I was feeling that it's like, what is the enemy not wanting to keep or is wanting to to keep back and not bring forth to this audience and hear from these amazing uh, speakers on these topics. So grateful for the guests that we had on that. If you missed any of those episodes, I highly recommend that you go through, I think finances and money. I think that's an area in our lives that a lot of us can just get a refined understanding of what the Lord says about money and the Bible. Okay. Moving on. I want to give you an update of what has transpired as far as my speaking career is concerned, my nonprofit, what I'm focused on professionally, and I want to leave you with a call to action. Before I do that, I'm going to send us into a super short break so we can hear from our sponsors and we'll be back in just a moment. Every leader must learn how to connect with those that follow. Your story is the proving ground for real content that connects with your audience and moves them to action. Creator Spark is a proud sponsor of Fearless Faith Radio. To claim your free leadership content strategy session, visit creatorspark.com slash fearlessfaith. You are ready to transform your workplace and look no further than PNI HCM your partner in building and maintaining the experiences your employees deserve. At PNI HCM, they take pride in offering cutting-edge payroll and HR solutions designed to streamline your people operations from recruitment to retirement. PNI HCM is your partner in creating a remarkable employee experience that boosts engagement, productivity, and your bottom line. In a world where only 33% of the workforce is engaged, choosing the right human capital management technology is crucial. PNI HCM isn't just a solution, we're your strategic ally. With PNI HCM, you're not just adopting technology, you're embracing a culture of belonging, appreciation, and longevity. Because when your workforce thrives, so does your organization. If you are ready to save time and elevate your employee experience, visit www.pnihcm.com now. And let us show you why we're the driving force behind successful workplaces. Welcome back to the Fearless Faith Radio Show. I'm your host, Mary Grothy, and we're halfway through our Reflections episode. And I would love to share with you what's going on with my speaking career. So many of you have been amazing supporters. Obviously, this was a big shift I made last year. I've been a keynote speaker for many years in the corporate world, speaking about sales, marketing, revenue engines, building holistic revenue engines, how CEOs scale high-performance sales teams, you name it, in the world of revenue, marketing, sales. I have spoken on it, and I definitely loved that career. I gave my speaking career to the Lord last year, and I found so much joy in sharing my testimony and helping set the example of how to live in fearless faith. Like, What does it look like to live in such a strong faith that fear is absent in all aspects of our life, but predominantly in the workplace? Because that is where, as a Christian executive in corporate America, I have found the greatest challenge is how do I bring Christ to work? in all things, because it is not easy. There's a lot of temptation in the marketplace. There's a lot of trials and there are triggering events that occur. I have had to bring the Lord into certain situations that I just 
surely thought I could handle on my own. I'm like, I am a capable, talented, brave, confident woman. I'm knowledgeable. I've got an amazing resume. I can do this. I'm going to stand firm in my own understanding. And then, right, (laughs) humbled. The Lord knows better. And bringing him into all situations and circumstances and ultimately just asking him to reveal what's in my heart. It does say to protect our heart in Proverbs above all else because from it, everything flows. And one of the ways that we know what is in our heart is what comes out of our mouth. And I was noticing in a few of my seasons, what was coming out of my mouth wasn't bringing life. It wasn't good as I had previously mentioned. And so anywho, there's just a lot that I have learned in this last season as a corporate executive and a a Christian executive in corporate America. And the Lord has revealed what those challenges might be that others are facing. And so I've been very passionate as I've been writing new content and seeking to be booked on other stages on how I can help people bring Jesus to work. How do you bring Christ to work? How do you bring your faith to work in all things? And I'm not talking about faith and work integration, like from a business owner perspective of how we're going to embody biblical principles and foundational principles of the Bible and, and Christianity into the way we do our business. I'm talking about a totally secular company in the market marketplace where you have a bunch of Christians that you've plugged into the ecosystem. And then you say, okay, further the kingdom inside of this company, whose mission, vision values, the core product that they're selling, none of it is of Christ, but you're a Christian and God put you in that place. So how do you bring Christ to work and bring the kingdom into that secular marketplace? Like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm excited about as a speaker, because most of us Christians in the marketplace are asleep in the light. And what we do is we experience this inner conflict and now we're stuck. And now we're stuck because the fear comes in. And that is where we do not have fearless faith, which is the name of this show. It's going to be the name of my new keynote that I'm writing of how in those moments when we are triggered, how do we stand fearlessly firm in our faith, bring Jesus to work and stand firm in God's promises and what we know to be the truth and how we handle all workplace interactions. It is so much easier said than done. You're dealing with everyone on the spectrum inside of the organization, whether they're a believer, a non-believer, or the further this atheist that wants to make sure to get anybody who is bringing their faith into the workplace sent to HR in trouble. Like, are you willing to be written up? Are you willing to not be promoted? Are you willing to get fired? Because you stood fearlessly firm in your faith in the workplace to honor God, honor the kingdom, further the kingdom through your work and bring heaven down to earth through the work that you get to do in a secular work environment. Those are like, at the end of the day, that is the true test Because if we're holding on to it and we think by our own hands that somehow we are God himself and that through our own hands, through the work that we do by suppressing him and that we're going to do with our own hands inside of the marketplace, we are being fooled and we are being deceived. Only God himself can carry out that plan for our lives, but we have to invite him in there to do it. As I continue to build my platform, as I continue to write new content, as I continue to seek and ask and apply to be put on stages, my message is going to be rooted firmly in fearless faith in the workplace on how we stand firm. And again, this isn't faith and work interaction. You could call me a faith and work speaker. I'm okay with that because we're going to talk about those two things. But when you think about faith and work integration, I know there are some impressive organizations out there that specifically target working with business owners and CEOs about taking it from the top down I'm not talking about that here. My role and what I've been able to experience in the last year, year and a half working for a secular corporate company and being who I am in that environment, Christians have their work cut out for them. And this isn't where we walk around carrying our Bible around and bashing people over the head. It is literally bringing Christ into every workplace interaction through us. It is being the love and light of Jesus. It is loving our neighbor. It is serving. And it is, it's honestly like the greatest thing that has helped me is digesting the book of Proverbs, the amount of wisdom that is in the book of Proverbs. And I like to listen to it in the mornings. It's how I put my armor up for my work day so that I can have this download and hear it on repeat of of how I am to be in the workplace and honoring all workplace interactions and transactions and conversations and business dealings and people, but doing it through the lens of how the Lord has told me how to do it. It is absolutely um, an incredible way to go through life and to go through being an executive or being a professional in the marketplace. I cannot wait to refine the content, to get clear on this message, to bring it forth to you. It's going to be a good time. On that note, 
with my speaking career, I'm going to genuinely just come to you and say that I do have a full-time job. That is my priority. I'm committed and invested in doing very good, doing remarkable work. It pays my bills, my loyalty to the company, and I want to be a good employee. I don't have the margin right now and all this free time to like be promoting myself and sending outbound emails or I don't have the finances to be hiring speaker agents and paying money to be a part of speakers bureaus. And so if you are connected to someone, anyone, an association, a church, a conference, a something that you know has an upcoming event and they're looking for speakers, it would mean so much to me. If you told me about it, I'd be happy to do the lift to apply for it. Or if you drop my name, everything that you need to know about me, at least to get a conversation initiated is at marygrothy.com, G-R-O-T-H-E. I would love if you could be my brother or sister in Christ and help me with that. It would go a long way. And I'm very, very grateful for that. All right. So that's what's going on with my speaking career. I'm really fired up about it, as you can tell. Okay, what's going on with my ministry? So as I shared, I launched Scaling Faith Ministries, which is a 508C1A, a non-reporting uh, religious nonprofit. And you can learn more at scalingfaith.com on what we're doing. But I had my first meeting with a bunch of spirit-led people who have come from very troubled walks of life, similar to what I came from. We're all very unique. We all have different things that we've overcome. The Lord has worked miraculously in our lives. We have unique testimonies and we have turned those testimonies into platforms and work that we are doing back into the community. We met around my kitchen table and there were a uh, one, two, three, four, five of us. And we sat down and we started to speak our visions and we started to build our business plans and we are moving. So for those of you who have contributed, I'm grateful for you. Uh, I mentioned this nonprofit. We had a listener that is um, on the East Coast who has been <laughs> writing us checks and funding this. And it's absolutely unbelievable that we have so many people connected in this audience who are like, we want to help fund these others and to give back into the community. So learn more at healingfaith.com. I will tell you one of the uh, members of our nonprofit, her name is Dernisha and she have spoken about her before. She's an amazing woman, but her business plan is to launch a crisis nursery. 72 hour care uh, might be extended based on certain exceptions for widows. And this is for women who find themselves in a scenario, whether it's when the moment occurs or when throughout their healing, their grief, or trying to get back on their two feet, like as a single mom and trying to get back into the workforce, other things, there's crisis nursery care for the children. Anything from this woman just needs a day to herself. She needs to continue to grieve. She needs to seek care. She needs quiet time. She Whatever it is that she needs, or she needs to travel or go get resources or whatnot, or we're in uh, any other level of crisis that that single mom is now facing as a widow. And so we are like, oh my gosh, we're so excited. We have a meeting with another crisis nursery in another part of the country that we're looking, they're very open playbook. So we're looking at copy pasting that, launching something here in Denver. I have um, two other people that are a part of this group that are launching work for addicts that are in recovery and their programs are unbelievable. So we're living house and then layered on with some counseling that really hits the trauma that has transpired in their lives and bringing forth just a whole new way to look at recovery and sobriety, which is unreal. And I learned so much having them at the table of what that walk of life actually looks like and what the current sober living communities look like and how they can bring something different to the market. So we're so excited about that and what we can do in our community. I also have Carol Ann, who was a part sitting around the table. You met Carol Ann. She was on the show. Carol Ann Budge with We So They. And this woman is ready to step into the next chapter of the calling in her life. And I am so excited to see, I'm so excited to see what God is going to do in her life with her ministry. She's the most established of all of us with her. It's not a ministry, excuse me. It's a nonprofit. It's not a religious entity, um, but it is a nonprofit. And to see what she's doing with it and where it's going to go. But the cool thing is all of us have a story to tell and all of us are different. How am I trying to say this? We 
are attractive to different types of audiences because of the life that we have lived. And so I am going to be working with this group of amazing people and we are going to be the freedom speakers. So we're working on our testimonies. We're working on our keynotes. We're working on our motivational messages and how we are going to reach the people we once were to go back into the community is the hell that we were living in when the Lord saved us from that hell and brought us forth specifically with Carol Ann, just she's saving other people from, from hell. She is pulling these children out of unbelievable situations and into orphanages and pulling them into adoption. And the, I mean, just the work that she's doing and then also how she is serving widows, truly, truly remarkable. And so we're going to be bringing these speakers together, finding nonprofits who serve these different types of communities, placing these speakers to reach the people so that they can see an example of what their life can look like post hell they're currently living in by extending their hand out and pulling them in and being the walking, living, breathing testimony of the Lord himself of what can happen. We are building this ministry off of being faithful witnesses, and we are going to testify in the name of the Lord of what life looks like on the other side of hell. And so we are building this slowly. We're being very intentional. So scalingfaith.com, if you're interested in supporting the ministry, it goes to fund these individual nonprofits, their initiatives. And it's all right here in Colorado, the way that we're giving back right here. Um, is where we're starting. And then I'm raising up the next generation of speakers, not these big flashy keynote speakers or smooth talkers. And they've got their platform and their best-selling book that they paid to become a bestseller. Sorry, that landed hard for a lot of people. But then we have these big, you know, nuanced speakers and they've got these big packages that they sell afterwards. Like these people, they are selling the testimony. They are selling the good news of the gospel. They are pointing these people to Jesus. And we need that, right? <laughs> we need that. So please, if you're interested in blessing that ministry, you can reach out to me and see, but a hundred percent, I have no overhead. So 100% of the donations are going right back into filling, fueling these other nonprofit initiatives. Right now we're in business plan building stage. And then also it's going to be to cover any hard costs that we would have for speaking and getting in front of these community members that we are extending our hand out and pulling them up. The last thing is, which does have a hard dollar cost is Sunday salmon. So many of you know, I love cooking and I have this big Sunday meal. Like I cook every Sunday, I make salmon every Sunday. And I want to take this community meal into the community, not inside of a church, not inside of the four walls of a church. There are people in our community that are that are begging to hear the word of the gospel that will never step in <laughs> to a church. So this is not church affiliated. This is going to be a community dinner we bring into the community at a community place. And we are going to reach these people with a meal. And then we will sit with our neighbors. We're going to learn about them. And we are going to befriend these people. And we are going to do life with these people. And that is how they are going to get pulled into a different way of living. And the Lord is going to work through that. So anyway, that's what Scaling Faith is. If you care to support us, I would love it. And it would mean so much to me. Okay. Where am I going? Last but not least, um, where am I headed professionally? The Lord has put it on my heart that while he has me in a corporate position to give it everything that I have from a place of uh, focus, intentionality, and doing remarkable work. In Colossians 3.23, we know that whatever we do, do it with all our heart as for working for the Lord and not for men. And that is uh, the scripture ringing in me right now that while I'm in a corporate position, even though he's moving, he's doing some other things in my life. He has stirred up my heart. He's got me on fire for him. I am committed to getting into the community and doing these different projects, sharing the good news of the gospel, speaking his name, pointing people to him so they can live a life of freedom. Like what I have, no more stress, strife, strain, no more shame, no more guilt, no more fear, no worry. Uh, it's, it's gone. It's gone because of him and how I can bring that to other people. So here I am on the journey. Um, I can't wait to share with you what is happening professionally as he continues to introduce me to people and get me working on some really fascinating projects. But my call to action for you in wrapping up today's episode, I need you to wake up the body of Christ needs to wake up. This is not a season anymore for comfort. We have escalations that look like World War III. We have extreme political unrest. Free speech is being challenged. We'll just say that. Our health, chronic disease rising, the pollution of what's going on in our soil and in our air, in the big push for medications, addressing symptoms, not root causes. We have industries that are 
thriving by keeping us sick. We have a lot going on right now, and this is not the time for a Christian to be sleeping in the light and be super comfy in their surroundings. Christ did not call us to be comfortable. He says that we were called, (laughs) well, let me step down a minute. The calling on everyone's life is different, and I don't want to make a blanket call to tell people what they're supposed to do. So let me pause, and I'm not going to go on a rant. I'm going to say my call to action for you is to seek the Lord, to dive into the word and let him speak to you through the word, to find your quiet time with him and to pray to him, to ask what the call on your life is, why he created you, where he wants you specifically, how to take your talents and gifts and align them to the call on your life, how you are to honor him. Because I guarantee you, it is not to just sit and be comfy or ignorant or to praise the Lord in private and worship the world in public. And some of you know what I'm talking about. It is time to stand fearlessly firm in your faith and whatever your specific walk is that Christ has for you, my call to action and my challenge for you is to wake up and go seek it. With that, I'm going to close this out for this week. Thank you for tuning in to a Reflections episode. I love you all. I'm grateful for you. Continue to subscribe, rate, and review. That really, 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 really helps this show. Blessings to you all. I'll see you next week. That's it for today's episode of Fearless Faith. Be sure to connect with me, Mary Grothy, G-R-O-T-H-E, on all social platforms. And to learn more about my keynote speaking and other ways to work with me at marygrothy.com.